Hi, welcome back to the Gapster channel. My name is Gabby and today we're going to talk about shielding and uh, does it actually make a difference to shield? I'm going to use a practical example, an actual Raspberry Pi and uh, some very basic testing equipment, nothing fancy, but it will do the job. So does shielding make a difference? I'm also going to show you the noise difference between a Raspberry Pi 3B and 4B. And then we're going to supply them with different power supplies and see how the noise is going to be affected. And then we're also going to analyze the sound that's coming out from the DAC and see how grounding could affect that sound or not. So this is going to be a really interesting one. So stick around and let's find out. When I showed the uh, Gapster Mini IP with that corky spearmint can as a shield, a few people laughed at it and said that's not going to do anything. Well, let's find out. There's noise everywhere around it. And uh, I'm going to connect the ground wire here. As soon as we connect the ground wire, it's pretty quiet. Let's analyze shielding in a more scientific way now. For this test, we're going to use uh, just your oscilloscope probe. It's connected to a sound card and basically the sound card is amplifying that noise. And that's going into a room on a computer that's running on batteries. I have this whole setup in a separate video. I'll put a link for it above and in, in the description as well if you want to see the whole setup and understand it more. So this is the noise level without plugging anything into it. Uh, it's around, it's just hovering roughly around, uh, there's some spikes here in the 20K region and stuff like that. This is the noise in, in the environment that we're detecting based on my uh, equipment. Uh, I'm gonna plug in the, uh, the oscilloscope uh, probe here and uh, you'll see a, a small significant increase but not much then i'm going to put the tip on it and that's going to make it increase a little bit more because of the tip and we're going to add a little antenna to it so what we have here is just a simple raspberry pi nothing uh, exceptional uh, and we are going to plug it in so before we plug it in let's test the noise level so we've got our handy dandy little antenna here that's going to measure the noise so we're just going to look at the reading here basically and also the graph and as you can see there's not this is just the ambient noise in the room we're looking at roughly a base level of 190 80 uh, microvolts so let's plug this thing in and uh, let's let it uh, go up a little bit it takes a bit of time for the noise to creep up more and more so we are already in the 900 microvolt just as soon as we plug this thing in. And so we've got roughly around, uh, you know, uh, close to one millivolt basically bounces up and down a little bit. So let's try something now by putting a shield. So I made this shield and uh, it's uh, made of basically a copper. It's just a small shield. It's not a full shield. It's not covering the entire Raspberry Pi, which would be ideal. But still, let's just observe that little shield and what it does. So we're going to put the shield on. And we're just going to have a look to see. So it dropped a little bit. It's more like 700 instead of uh, 1 millivolt. So it's 700, 800 microvolt. So this is just a shield alone. So it did a little bit of a help, but not huge. I wouldn't say that was a huge thing. Now let's watch this. So this is a ground wire. And uh, we're just going to plug the ground wire on. And as soon as we plug the ground wire, it dropped pretty drastically. We're down to about half. We're looking about, you know, 300 and... 80 microvolts here, 400 microvolt as a, as a noise. Now let's watch something else. I'm just going to grab another ground wire, and this time I'm going to ground the actual Pi itself. And look at that, we dropped another half, so we're down to 235, 240, something like that. So basically, 
in grounding the pie makes also a difference. Now let's take the ground off the shield and again it jumps up to 400. So with the shield down to 250, without the shield 400. And uh, same with this shield here. If we take it out we're in the 1.2 millivolts here. That's everything is creeping up higher now that's warmed up. So the moral of the story is you want to shield your pie and you also want to put a shield above all these noisy electronics and also ground it by grounding it. All that stray energy is going to have somewhere to go because uh, electricity doesn't just hover, it needs to go from A to B. So by providing the ground plate it's going to have somewhere to go to and dissipate and that's how we make some efficient shielding. So yes the shield does make a difference but if you ground it it's going to make a huge difference and grounding our pie is also makes a huge difference. So what if we cover everything with one big shield something that goes like on top of everything what would that do? So let's just establish some base levels again so without nothing grounded to earth we have around close to one millivolt grounding this to earth gave us about 300 microvolts now adding this here grounding earth the little plate here over the processor and that brought us down to 140 and if we keep that ground on the uh, on the raspberry pi just the shield itself brought us down to about 200 and if we ground that and that brings us down to close to 83 so just a little bit more also further gains here in noise reduction. So conclusion uh, it's good to, gr to ground to earth your uh, raspberry pi when I say ground to earth means to the ground that's in your socket basically the main house ground and also if you put some sort of a shield on top of the processors and if you also attach the ground to the shield itself and if you want to go even further you would actually encase the whole thing and you ground it to earth as well so this out of what we can come out of all this so i hope this helps you understand a little bit about earth ground and what it means here now bear in mind that ground is could mean different things for different people sometimes ground is just the fact that you're attaching all the negative poles together and that you call that ground that doesn't mean it's ground to earth there's difference between ground and earth ground in this case we are talking about earth ground now I'm going to try one more thing with my handy dandy probe that I've talked about before. If you guys haven't seen this probe thing, I uh, have a video. I'll put a link for it above here and also in the description below. It's basically it amplifies noise. It's got a small little antenna. When you push the button, it makes noise. And when you get close to noisy stuff, it'll be louder and louder. So let's look at uh, this here. Let's turn the volume up a tiny bit. So let's start with the bass uh, sound here. We're gonna take, unplug the Pi, take the shield off and unplug the ground from here. So what we have here is, let's see, this is the noise of the room pretty much. I mean, you'll see more noise in the computer, more noise here, there's noise everywhere. But not a lot of noise coming out of the the Raspberry Pi like this. So we're gonna connect the Raspberry Pi and power it on and uh, now that's noise so now you could see there's a big and the closer I get to the processor the crazier it gets so this is like really noisy area here. So uh, what if we put a shield on top of that and see what happens So, a little better but not a lot better and uh, we're gonna put ground on the uh, I'm gonna keep this on actually on the Raspberry Pi 
Now that made a big difference. Still noisy though. And if I get close, it's noisy. Now what if I ground the plate here? A little bit better, a lot better actually. There's a bit of distance. Makes a good, make a good sync. So it's the same result. I'm just trying to tell you that this probe is not so bad. If you want something easy, you don't want to muck around, you can get one of those. And you know, it's, it's a crude way to measure things basically. And what if we put the big thing here on top of that and ground this part? Made a little difference as well. Another question I get asked a lot is, should I use a 3B or a 4B Raspberry Pi? Which one is less noisy? Let's find out. So I have here a 3B plus and a 4B here. And uh, so we're gonna give those two a try. Both plugged into the same type of uh, power supply, the iFi. And uh, we're gonna measure the noise on both of them. So let's start by putting our thing right around the middle here and we are measuring around uh, 2.2 millivolts and on the 4 we are measuring about the same pretty much about the same yeah so basically we're looking at fairly similar noise level between the two contrary to what I was made to believe that the 3B is a lot less noisier than the 4B. It appears as if it's not. And one more thing. Let's compare two 4B Raspberry Pis with two different power supplies. And let's see the noise levels then. So here we have the first 4B that's running with the i5 power supply. And this is another 4B running with just a generic one. So we can see that this one is running about 2.7 millivolts. And this one running about 2.5. This one again, almost 3.3 actually now. And here, 2.4, something like that. So the power supply does make a big difference on the type of uh, noise you're gonna get. So if you wanna get less noise, you wanna use a better power supply. And that seems very evident in here. So here we have Ian's Pure Pi, which is supposed to be a really nice power supply. Let's find out. So same thing, remember we measured about 2.2 to 3 millivolts with the same kind of uh, base testing here and we're gonna test right here and we're measuring about 1.7 1.8 so we had some further reduction with this uh, power supply not a lot but but just uh, good enough to uh, good enough to uh, to see a little bit of a difference here so uh, so the better the power supply you are gonna use on your Raspberry Pi the less the noise you are going to get. Now bear in mind these are very rough, you know I'm not using the state-of-the-art instrumentation here, everything is you know this little movement, movements here, movements there could could jeopardize the exact measurement but I tried my best to be as fair as possible and try to demonstrate things as consistently as possible. Just to give you some idea about the noise level that yet you can see in uh, different power supplies. All right, so what about the sound? Does it actually affect the sound itself? And so we've got a rig here partly by in Canada and the Prodac on top and I've got the, uh, the RCA output here going into the uh, sound card and then we're gonna analyze the uh, a one uh, kilohertz uh, wave and let's see what happens so we're looking here at the screen so we've got the uh, one kilohertz wave at minus 10 db and we have some uh, these are the harmonics of the 1k so you see 2k 3k 4k and so forth so these are okay 
but we have quite a bit here a product of 60 hertz here we have some 180 which is the same product of 60 and uh, then some quite a bit of low frequencies here hovering around so let's see by putting a uh, we're gonna put a ground on the shield here like we did before and as you can see here we lowered the uh, 60 product quite a bit so this is without you can see how high it is right here and this is with and you can see how it went down now if i go and ground the actual pie as well like we did before you're gonna see even further further reduction in noise you can see the noise dropped even further so same results so this is basically coming out of this, uh, the actual rca sound so there is a chance this could affect the sound now that whether you'll actually hear it or not this is going to be up to you but uh, there's a good chance you might hear it especially if you get really close to the speaker but there's a chance you might not so but nevertheless we try not to have we're trying to keep that signal as pure as possible then I actually did a proper listening test. I listened to some music on my speakers with ground and without ground. It was hard to hear a difference between the two, but on some quiet passages, I could hear a tiny bit of difference in the quiet notes. And if I played the track with no sound, just a quiet track, I could hear a little bit more noise if I cranked the volume higher on the quiet passages. So yes, there is a little bit of a difference even when you listen with your ears. Not huge, but there is a small one. As you can see, shielding is important. Especially, you need to ground to earth the Raspberry Pi itself and also a little shield is also helpful. Now you can connect those two together, they could be become as one common earth ground actually which is the most the better way to do it but we're trying to in this case trying to see whether it actually makes a difference or not to have a shield or not so it looks like it does make a little bit of a difference to have a shield on top of the processors but also most importantly it's also important to earth ground the actual negative ground negative pole of the raspberry pi itself so I hope you like this video. If you find it helpful, give it a thumbs up, subscribe if you haven't, and I uh, hope to see you again in another video. If you're looking at some of my other videos, I'll uh, put a link on the corner above of one of the uh, early uh, things where I set up the testing of this, uh, how I figured out all the sound card and the, all the stuff, so you can do some RT analysis with the Roo software.